Hey, what's up, everyone? Welcome back to another episode of the Venom Vlog, and we are here to finally start a Space Night week. I know I've been talking about this for a while, and I'm like, all right, let me see if I can get all these recorded before my surgery and try to get them up as soon as possible. So hopefully these will go up in a timely manner, and we can get through these, because obviously we have another Carnage week we got to do. I'm going to try to do by the end of May if I can, or at least the beginning of June. And then I want to spend most of uh, July, or all of July, just talking about the time that Peter Parker had the alien costume, and talk about all those stories, including the newer Peter David ones as well. So, uh, so yeah, so we don't have a lot to discuss, because this Space Night thing didn't last very long long. Um, obviously, recently we talked about, uh, actually it might have been a couple months now, but uh, we talked about, you know, Flash Thompson joining the Guardians of the Galaxy and Brian Michael Bendis doing that whole thing. And then uh, we have more Guardians of the Galaxy to talk about in the next episode, uh, as well as a, a story called Black Vortex, which was like a big crossover with the X-Men and uh, the Guardians of the Galaxy, which Bendis did. But, uh, but before we get to that, I want to talk about the first six issues of Venom Space Knight. Now, this the idea of this, this is one of those things where I don't like the concept because it comes from a very like uh, hollow business decision. Uh, if you guys don't know the story behind this, basically Marvel was going to, I guess they had to give up the rights or lose the rights to ROM Space Knight. But I guess they were allowed to keep the term Space Knight or there was some kind of mix up there or some kind of weird thing there uh, where they like fought tooth and claw to not give up everything. And so they were like, all right, well, if we can't do ROM Space Knight anymore and that went over to IDW, why don't we just continue the Space Knight thing and just slap it on a different Marvel character? And of all the characters they choose, they chose Venom. <laughs> so I guess this probably was something Bendis came up with because it happened in the pages of his book. Or it could be something his editors on that book came up with. But either way, it just feels very hollow, like a very uh, corporate decision and not like really a creative one. So I got to give Robbie Thompson credit who writes these issues that we're going to talk about today because they're... He does, I think, the best he can with this material. <laughs> like, um, I actually, when I reread this, I was like, okay, I don't think I ever read it when it first came out. I read it, I think, a couple months ago, and I, I thought I remembered liking it more than this. But what I really like about this story is um, basically the final three issues. <laughs> so, so this stuff I'm not a big, big fan of, uh, but I don't hate it either, and I think it's worth discussing. So we'll go over a little bit. I'll kind of give you my brief thoughts on it, and I'd love to hear yours down in the comments below. So definitely leave comments down there after you watch this video. Let me know what you think of these first six issues, like which I said are written by Robbie Thompson, and it's drawn by Ariel Olivetti, um, who has done some cool stuff. I'm not a, a big, big fan of Ariel's artwork. Um, it's very digital and, and you know, uh, and painted and stuff, but like, but like digital painted, but it, it does look okay. I just think sometimes you can't get really dynamic shots with them, with that style. Uh, you know, everything looks very blocky and, and you know, and, and uh, it, it doesn't, I don't know, it's, it doesn't feel the same as staring at like real pencil art. And I don't know, maybe Ariel uh, does do pencil art to this and starts off with pencils and then digitize on top of it, or I don't know the process, but it just, the look of this doesn't blow me away, the art itself. Um, but it's not bad. It's not like, you know, there's a couple artists out there where I'm just like, Ugh, I, I know you're probably just starting out, but you know, uh, but it's tough to read to read this book with, with your art in it. But this is not that case. I'm just not a huge fan, but I'm not, you know, a hater of it either. Uh, but what they do with, you know, Flash now, because Flash Thompson, uh, that's where we're at in the timeline for those who aren't, uh, haven't been following if you're new here. Um, we're going through the whole history of Venom and we've gone through nearly all 32 plus years of Venom's history. And we're just winding down with like the last few things. So like this Space Knight stuff, another Carnage Week, the Peter Parker Spider-Man stuff, and then uh, the end of Donny Cates' run when it comes out uh, next month. So pretty much we'll be completely caught up on all the main continuity of Venom stories. That's how long we've been doing this show. <laughs> uh, so welcome if you're new here. Uh, but please go back. I made a playlist of all the history of Venom comics in chronological order, the ones we've done so far. There's a separate playlist just for that. There's over 200 videos. So if, if you ever want to just know the full history of Venom, you can binge that if you want. And, uh, and you know, let me know your thoughts on those videos when you watch them. Um, so what Marvel does, you know, is with this is they basically make Flash Thompson James Bond, but mixed with James T. Kirk from uh, from the newer Star Trek. That's why I have the lens flares. I was like, you know what? If I uh, put my lights at a certain setting, uh, which I've done before, it just it has these lens flares everywhere, <laughs> kind of. So I'm like, let's do that in in uh, in kind of tribute to J.J. Abrams' uh, Star Trek. Um, that's kind of how Flash feels here. He's just like this guy who commandeers a ship and he's running around the universe now he's an agent of the cosmos as you know we talked about that uh in that last video and i'll put a link to it down below so you can hear the story of how the suit the venom suit the clintar suit was uh, cleansed i guess is the best way to put it 
and it was cleansed of all of its rage and hate and everything when they brought it back to its home planet. Which, if you're reading Donny Kate stuff now, that doesn't really make any sense how that's possible. Uh, but hey, whatever, comics, right? Uh, so in this story, uh, now that he's cleansed, or the suit is cleansed, they can hear like cries of help out in the universe and that's i guess what an agent of the cosmos is again this is totally a corporate idea of hey use the term space knight and robbie thompson's like doing the best <laughs> he can with it um and so he can kind of tap into the universe and hear you know cries for help and so he just that's what he's doing he's going around like a james bond or like a james kirk uh you know intervening to you know in alien lives uh going to their home planets rescuing them you know if there's any that need rescuing or just shooting like any warlords that are on their planet and killing them uh that's pretty much what he's doing uh, and along the way he meets this robot called 803 who keeps begging him uh, he keeps begging Flash to kill it. it. You know, 803 is like, it's like a suicidal droid. It's kind of like Eeyore. It reminds me a lot of that droid from uh, Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, uh, uh, voiced by the, uh, I think it was Alan Rickman, the great Alan Rickman, um, rest in peace. And uh, I love uh, I love that. So I was kind of like, oh, that's cool. That feels like Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. And it's like this depressed robot that's following Flash around. It's like, look, I'll, I'll help you betray my, you know, uh, like the people I, that are I'm working for right now, uh, who is a guy named Keo, I think. Uh, and he's like, I'll help you betray him as long as you promise to kill me. And Flash is like, sure, no problem, robot buddy. I'll kill you. No problem. Let, just help me betray your guy and and uh, and I'll, I'll come back and kill you. And of course, Flash never does. He kind of spares the robot and they begin a friendship. And so he's kind of hanging out with this droid, you know, that's like follow him around and they commandeer another ship and they go out into the universe to like, you know, get into more trouble. And uh, And again, it's just basically Flash... Every issue is him starting off on a planet, fighting like a giant crab monster, ripping its arm off, saving some people, and then going on to the next planet. And on his way, he like pisses off, you know, the main villain of the, all this. This was uh, a villain named Mercurio, who's like this warlord in space who likes killing agents of the cosmos, I guess, and isn't afraid of them. So he's out there, you know, plotting a plan to kill uh, Agent Venom, who's now new on the scene. And he wants to kill uh, Agent Venom before they get better at this, uh, you know, Agent of the Cosmos thing. Um, and that's when he actually Flash meets other Agents of the Cosmos, uh, Mintril and Tarna, who are two other beings that have, uh, one of them I think has a symbiote, and they're also Agents of the Cosmos. Um, so he meets them, they kind of get off on a rocky start, but they're like, look, you need to prove yourself. And right now you're just kind of all over the place doing random things, but you need to really like focus in and, and bring real help to some civilization and flash is like hey i've been helping people like you know get off my back or whatever so uh so, which he has actually um so this mercurio guy is like okay let's send in a killer like something i know will kill flash uh and or this venom character uh let's send one of our um you know one of our prisoners like our hardcore prisoners towards flash so they pick pick uh, they pick <laughs> uh, i just realized i did that um they choose pick Rio and Pick is a giant panda bear looking monster <laughs> and uh, it's actually very adorable looking and when it shows up Flash is even like hey you're adorable and then it starts fighting him and the two of them get into a big kerfuffle um, and actually get thrown into a tournament to the death and have to fight them each other and then other people come in and fight uh, and then they decide to team up and fight you know everyone else because Flash finds out that Pick uh, has a daughter and Pick is a woman, a female, you know, a panda bear, uh, and has a daughter who is being held by Mercurio. So she, even though she's a ruthless killer, she has to, you know, she wants to save her daughter. So she's like, so Flash, like, look, I'll help you get your daughter back if you help me get out of this situation. Um, and she's like, okay, deal. So they make a deal and they work together and they get out of the tournament and, and survive. Uh, and then of course, again, along the way, because every issue, like I said, is just Flash meeting a different being. He, he goes to this lava planet and he meets this woman named Ika, I think is how you pronounce it. And she's like, uh, she's a lot like that woman from Superman who I'm blanking on her name right now. Um, where who like shows up and like punches Superman and then grabs him and kisses him. And it's like, all right, you know, you're a worthy mate. And Superman's like, what? And then so, cause she can tell he's super strong. So she's like, yes, she's like, I I'm a super strong woman. And I travel around the universe looking for the strongest men uh, to be my husband. Uh, and she's like, and I haven't found me one as strong as you. So I think you're worthy to be my husband. And he's like, who are you? Like, <laughs> I always love that. Uh, so Ika is kind of like that. She's like that with flash. She's like, Hey, I, um, uh, you know, I think you're, you can hold your own and you help me save my lava planet of these monsters. So I think you're ready to join my husband stable. And he's like, uh, okay. And she kind of looks like Medusa. She's got like a uh, snake hair and stuff. She's pretty cool. Um, so 
all of this, all this is going on, and Flash uh, actually realizes on the quiet moments in between missions that the Clintar suit, now that it's been cleansed, he separates from it sometimes. Like when he goes to the, the lava planet, he has to separate from it because the Clintar suit itself will burn up on the planet, right? Because fire hurts alien symbiotes. So, uh, so it had to stay behind on the ship. When Flash comes back to the ship, the suit forms into uh, Agent Venom or, or Cosmos Venom, whatever, Space Knight Venom, and is sitting in a chair and is able to verbally talk to, uh, to Flash, which is a new ability. And Flash is like, wait, you're not speaking to me in my head. You're actually like, you're verbalizing your words. And, and the suit is like, yes, like, I think we need to talk. And they start talking and they start figuring out like uh, that these new abilities come from the cleansing and that because it doesn't feel rage, it's able to maybe tap into some other abilities that it didn't know it could do before because it was blinded by hatred and stuff and been corrupted all these years from its first host, you know, to all, to all these other, you know, hosts that it's had over the years. Um, and then its first first host, I guess, because we, we now know there was a, a host before uh, Peter Parker and stuff. Uh, and I'm not counting Deadpool, <laughs> although I know some people do. Um, but uh, yeah, sorry, I have a, a list of notes here because uh, this book was, um, it, you know, it got a little hard to follow at times, like, uh, to be honest with you, like, I wasn't sure how the rest of the story was going to play out. Uh, so I started taking notes because I was like, all right, there's a lot of new characters here and they're not, they're in it enough to where my brain was trying to remember them, but I did fall behind sometimes. And I'm like, wait, what's that person's name? Pick Rio. Okay. And I'm like, wait, what's that other guy's name? A Keo. And so I had to go back and take notes. So, so if you see me just looking down here, just cause I have a nice sheet of paper of notes that I'm looking at. Um, but now that the Clintar can talk and do all that stuff, uh, Flash is like, okay, well we have a mission. Like, uh, this Mercurio guy sent Pick to kill us. We're going to help Pick get her daughter back. We have Ika on the team, and we also have 803. All of us need to go down to where Mercurio is, uh, take the fight to him, and I have a plan. And so they go down there, and of course, at first, the plan doesn't go very well, and Mercurio actually takes the symbiote right off of Flash. Because like I said, Mercurio is not afraid of Agents of the Cosmos, so he has a weapon that shoots Sonics and immediately separates the suit from Flash. Uh, and then, then Mercurio bonds with the symbiote, which, as we know, is not very good for the symbiote because Mercurio is a lethal, horrible, evil guy, and someone with that kind of mentality is just going to re-corrupt the Venom costume, you know, the Clintar suit, uh, because now that it's been cleansed, it doesn't have those feelings, and when it's with Flash, you know, he's a, a better person, you know, and he's he's grown a lot too. So, uh, so the suit doesn't get angry, it doesn't get, ra you know, full of rage. But now that it's bonded to Mercurio, it's starting to get a taste of that rage again. Uh, but this was all part of the plan, and it was a big uh, risk that they took because obviously the Clintar is now susceptible to get corrupted again. But they needed to make Mercurio feel like he was in control, and that allowed Flash without the suit to go with Pick and free the daughter, and then get 803 and Ika in place. And they all fought back and then the suit separated from mercurio went back to flash and they all took down mercurio together and i think at the end though he does slip away so he does go off and they, you know they have to chase after him in the next uh story but at least here they save the day they get pick's daughter back they bring uh you know uh, pick two back to her home planet with her daughter and it's like okay you guys can you know stay here if you want and they're like i don't know maybe we'll hang out with you but if or you know or maybe if you ever need help you know just call us or whatever so so flash is starting to build his his team, his team of enter, you know, the the uh, Enterprise, and actually that's a joke that will be in the next one we'll talk about because in issue seven they actually make a USS Enterprise joke, just not the way it's not spelled the way you think it is, which is kind of fun. Um, but we'll get there. So now at the you know this these six issues ends with Flash now having a, another team, which is weird because he's on the Guardians of the Galaxy with like the Thing and uh, and uh, Kitty Pride now is the new Star Lord on the team. So we're gonna talk about that in the next episode, and we're gonna breeze right through it because literally the last like three trades that Bendis did of Guardians of the Galaxy, they renumbered it back to number one, and he did like three trades worth. And in those three trades, there's like two issues, I'm not even exaggerating, that focus on Flash Thompson, aka Agent Venom. And this is a character that literally Bendis set up and had him cleanse and everything, and then does nothing with him. Uh, even in the miniseries Black Vortex, which is going to be the start of our next episode, uh, there's it's like an 11-page story, 12-issue 12 12 story, and Flash is in like 20 panels. 
20 panels roughly in the whole series like he's he doesn't really do anything in that book like at all so we're going to go over that real briefly in the next episode but in this one i just want to talk about these first six issues uh, by robbie thompson and ariel olivetti and just kind of tell you what flash is up to now that he's an agent of the cosmos uh and now that he's built like this little um you know enterprise team like he's got his own star trek unit uh out there you know um to help save the days you know go around and uh and help save alien races and stuff and so i'm like hey, it's it's cool. I mean, I, I like the idea of doing something Star Trek-y, you know, and a little James Bondy with Flash, uh, you know, Agent Venom. It's not a terrible idea on one level, but on another level, it must be really hard to make it a fun idea. So I think like Robbie did his best with this concept, uh, but it is, I think at the heart of it, it it's not a very strong concept. It, I think in the really right hands, you could have someone have some real fun with this. And I think Robbie does their best, but I don't know. Maybe this is the best you can get with this idea because uh, it's just, I don't know. It kind of works in some areas and kind of doesn't for me. So uh, so I want to know what you guys think. What did you think of Space Knight? Are you a fan of this? I know some of you already told me that you weren't. Uh, so let me know down in the comments below what you think of issues one through six of Venom Space Knight. And uh, we'll get to um, the Black Vortex and the Bendis Guardians run, the second run. We'll do that in the next episode. And then the third episode, we'll do like four more issues of this uh, run from these guys, from Robbie and uh, Ariel Olivetti. And then uh, we'll also then end with a Civil War II tie-in thing. Um, so this will be like four or five videos roughly. So I'll try to record as many as I can today. And if I can't get all of them done today, I'll do more tomorrow. Um, and then, uh, you know, then Tuesday's my surgery. So I'll try to do what I can and get these out to you guys very, very soon. So um, again, let me know what you think and we'll continue the conversation in the comments down below as always. Thanks so much. See you in the future. Peace.